Hey there, let's talk about battery management systems. Battery management system or a BMS is a system designed to keep your batteries safe. Designed to keep your batteries from over discharging or overcharging. Something that is needed with today's lithium batteries. As you guys know, I have been developing a PCB kit, a system that is designed to quickly and easily build battery packs for energy storage, also known as power walls. We are making DIY power walls. And the PCB looks like this. The black one is the one that you will be able to buy. You can use it with a green 18650s or gray 18650s, or you could even use them with non 18650s like these Boston Sonatas. This project is still in beta, even though there's already about 10,000 these out in the wild you guys are building a bunch of batteries and so the question that I keep getting is what do we use as a BMS so for BMS we have a couple of choices we can use the aftermarket BMS's like this here's another version this is a 4s this is a 7s so we're gonna want the 7s because our system is for 24 volts so I'm currently designing a PCB board that will allow you to use up to three of these guys solder into to a board that is the same physical dimensions as this one. That's the simple off the shelf solution using, you know, BMSs that are made for the e-bike industry. It's gonna be cheap and it's gonna be easy to implement and use and install. And I think it's gonna be great. Now, the problem is that these BMSs are kind of dumb. You never know what they're doing and if they're actually doing anything. And so for more advanced systems, we will need a more advanced BMS. So today I wanna talk to you about this little guy here. This is an Electrodocus. SBMS 120. The 120 stands for 120 amps that it's possible to handle. And this little device here is actually three products in one. This is a solar charge controller. This is a battery management system. And also this is a battery meter with logging. It is pretty, pretty powerful and it's not too expensive. So let's look more into it to see its features. The Electrodocus comes in two versions currently, the SBMS 40 and the SBMS 120. Again, this can handle 40 amps and this one can handle 120 amps. One is bigger than the other one, but they both have the same functionality and the same feature set. So here's a simplified diagram of the SBMS 120. It supports up to eight cells, right? And this is for lithium iron phosphate, uh, the 3.2 volt version. Uh, since we are using 18650s, then we will have to use seven cells. Uh, so it can match 24 volt legacy uh, components. This one already can handle up to 12 solar panels. Daisy and the creator suggest using uh, 60 cell panels. The They range about between 290 watts to 350 watts. And he suggests these ones because that's the voltage that will work best for a 24 volt system. So here we go, these are just specifications. The 40 can do 48 amps, the 120 can do 72 amps, 75 amps, and this is of course, this is PV, right? Okay, so here are instructions how to connect the system. It uses one of these little guys, one of these ribbon cables to connect all the voltage sensing and balancing leads into your batteries. When using this device, you will have to use some kind of a heat sink because the these devices will want to dissipate about 24 watts for the SBMS120 and about eight watts for the S. BMS 40 at full load. And this is with charge and discharge at the same time. So a small heat sink will be able to take care of that. So here's how you can install external loads like large inverters. You will have to put an external shunt and you will have to connect it directly into the battery that way. It also has a feature to remotely turn on or turn off a, an inverter and a charger. So that's what these green cables here are and that's what these uh, these blue ones and these green ones here are. All right, I also want to show you something here. The f this is what the unit looks like. To set it up, you'll first have to install or connect 
power to it via a USB using, you know, just a regular power pack. Once the unit goes through the entire startup procedure there, then what you can do is you can go in the parameter settings, you click OK, and here you define the battery type. Uh, it says most probably you will want to use lithium iron phosphate, but in this case we're not using lithium iron phosphate, so we are using uh, lithium cobalt oxide, right? So here we go, lithium cobalt oxide. There are some 2.4 volt cells, super capacitors, the 2.3 volts or the 2.5 volts, all kinds of stuff like that. So let's pick our cells. We're gonna use lithium cobalt oxide, okay. Then it automatically picks uh, seven cells, right? And then it gives you the, the a diagram of how you're supposed to connect these little connectors here, or these cables. Now following that little diagram, I have used the cable that comes included on this, and then I have connected and transferred it into our little uh, pinout for our PCB boards, right? If you put it in there, it'll match. All you have to do is just use a connector that goes from one to the other. So this right here is an adapter cable for the Electrodocus SBMS120 to our PCB boards uh, that are our PCB battery boards. Other things that you can specify here is the battery capacity. Uh, this one's set to 200, but you can set it to whatever, depending on what size of your battery. And then something that I want to show you here is advanced parameter settings, only for advanced users that understand different battery characteristics, right? Are you an advanced user? A lot of you are advanced users. So here's what's really interesting, right? Um... Again, you can change the type of batteries, but we don't want to. The types, the number of cells, the battery capacity, over voltage. Here's where it's really interesting. A lot of you guys say, hey, how do we find a BMS that doesn't overcharge our batteries? It doesn't start like balancing until like the batteries are almost way overcharged to 4.2. Everybody knows that cells that are charged all the way up will last longer. In order to make the cells last uh, you know, the maximum amount, you'd have to charge them less. So this one here, it's totally user assignable. You can use, you can set this to whatever. You want to overcharge your batteries to 4.8? I don't recommend it, but you could totally do it, right? You, you want to charge them all the way up to 4.2 because your battery, you have barely enough battery. You don't care if it doesn't last you, you know, 10 years or 20 years, then you can set it here. But if you're going for longevity for your batteries, then you might want to set it up to like 4.1, uh, 4.10 volts, for example, right? And you can totally set it here. If you want to be more, you know, conservative with your batteries and make it last longer so you never have to think about batteries again, 4 volts, right? Uh, you can totally set all this stuff up. You click OK, over voltage delay. You can adjust that over voltage recovery. If all cells fall below this charge, Fed is turned on. So here we go. So once all the batteries recover to 3.8, right, then um, then the, the, the thing will start working again. Here we go, under voltage, right? So this one is right now set to 3.2. Now, of course, we all know that, you know, lithium coal oxide could go all the way down to 2.5 volts, right? Of course, a lot of the damage happens when you're way down there, right? So you might wanna do, I don't know, someone like Tesla and leave it around three volts. All right, so you get the idea. This thing is very, very powerful. We haven't even started scratching the surface on all the features that it has, right? Uh, it fits really well with our system because it's uh, ultra low voltage which makes it like almost nearly impossible for anyone to electrocute themselves while they're working on this. So it's a great fit for all levels of uh, expertise. 
As great as this device is, there is one slight problem. I've owned this specific device for about a year now and I haven't really done a video or a build project with it because its creator does not make it always available. So it's not like you can't just buy it all the time. He does batches and they usually take a few months for them to make, right? And so it's it's kind of hard to get. You have to order it and you have to wait months usually to get it and stuff. And so the, the reason why I'm making this video now is because he just recently started a new Kickstarter campaign and he's uh, taking pledges right now. I think it's about two weeks for the campaign to end and he's only got like about $18,000 left to go for the campaign to be funded. Um, and you can go and read more details on it and stuff and you can, you know, pledge to get one, you know, at the beginning of next year in a month or two, right? So this could be a really, really good BMS for you guys. Uh, 24 volts, like I said, is ultra low voltage, super safe. It's really well suited for RVs or off-grid systems. Um, you could use this on a 48 volt system. You'll have to use two units and stuff and you'll have to manage uh, half of the pack with one and half the other pack with the other two. It is possible to do it. So if you wanna help Dacian, the creator of this product, uh, meet his campaign goals, head over to Kickstarter, uh, Head over to Kickstarter on this uh, link that I'm going to put here and let's make this happen. This is a really, really great system. It took a ton of time from him uh, to develop. As he developed the entire thing, the hardware and the software side of the thing. And this is open source, right? But of course, it's really hard and really intricate to make one of these devices that it's for most of us. DIYers is just way above our heads, right? So, so if you feel compelled, head over to Kickstarter and let's help him fund this campaign so that he can make more and we can use them with our DIY power walls. All right, I hope you find this video useful. And if you're interested in this sort of stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you like the video, you share it, all that good stuff. And if you are interested in batteries and want to learn more, there's uh, this book right here that you can also pick up and start learning all the basics, right? So with that, I said goodbye, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.